This is Anthony Giddens, and this is Ulrich Beck, two very important modern-day sociological theorists, and today I'm going to be talking about the theory of modernity. Giddens was born in January 18, 1938 in London. As the first person in his family to go to university, he received a joint psychology and sociology degree from the University of Hull, his master's at the London School of Economics, and his PhD at King's College, Cambridge. He traded in his cap and gown for a suit when he was appointed lecturer at the University of Leicester in 1961 and then in Cambridge University in 1969. From there, he came up with his first internationally famous book, The Class Structure of Advanced Societies, as well as The Constitution of Society, Outline of the Theory of Structuration, a worldwide successful textbook in sociology, and modernity and self-identity, and several more books over his years. So you're probably wondering what modernity is. Well, according to Giddens, it's a shorthand term for modern society or industrial civilization. So basically, the modern world. But Giddens wanted to break it down into three parts. He said modernity is a set of attitudes towards the world, the idea of the world as open to transformation by human intervention. He said it's a complex of economic institutions, especially in industrial production and a market economy. And he said modernity is a certain range of political institutions, including the nation state and mass democracy. Giddens says that the modern world is like a juggernaut. He describes the juggernaut of modernity as a runaway engine of enormous power, which collectively as human beings, we can drive to some extent, but which also threatens to rush out of our control. He says the juggernaut crushes those who resist it, and while it sometimes seems to have a steady path, there are many times when it veers away erratically in directions we cannot foresee. The idea of a juggernaut fits with structuration theory, especially with the importance in that theory of space and time. The image of a juggernaut is of something that is moving along through time and over physical space, which I will discuss later. Giddens draws heavily on Marx, but stresses that modernity is multidimensional and complex. He believes that there are four basic institutions. Capitalism, industrialization, surveillance capacities, and military power. Capitalism is commodity production, private ownership of capital, propertyless wage labor, and a class system derived from these characteristics. Industrialization includes the use of inanimate power sources and machinery to produce goods. He also includes transportation, communication, and domestic life in this. Surveillance capacities include the supervision of the activities of subject populations, mainly but not exclusively in the political sphere. Military power, or the control of the means of violence, includes the industrialization of war. It should also be included that at the macro level, Giddens focuses on the nation state under this as well. Just when you thought he was finished there, Giddens actually talks about three items that give modernity dynamism. Time and space separation, disembedding of social system, and the reflexivity of modern society. So let's break this down a bit. Time and space separation means the concept of time and space are changing. Giddens says that in the modern society, there has been standardization and globalization of time, which allows us to interact with each other without problem. He also says each technological advancement expands our space. For disembedding of social systems, Giddens says that social institutions are important for local society and have survived a long time. However, he says that because of modernization, they are becoming disembedded from local societies or communities. In this, he says there are two mechanisms. Symbolic tokens, which are the media of exchange that can be passed around among individuals and institutions, such as money, and disturb the perception of space. So for example, Canadian money and European money never meet each other, but can carry out transactions with each other. So these symbolic tokens lift transactions out of the local community and produce new patterns across time and space. The second mechanism is expert systems. As Giddens quotes, by expert systems, I mean systems of technical accomplishment of professional expertise that organize large areas of the material and social environments in which we live today. So that can include doctors, lawyers, scientists who run the community and permit the removal of these social relations from their immediate context as they move across space and time. The third item that gives modernity dynamism is the reflexivity of modern society. Giddens says that social practices are constantly examined and reformed in the light of incoming information about those very practices, which alters their character in the end. He says everything is open to reflection in the modern world, including reflection itself, leaving us with a sense of uncertainty. So let's talk about Ulrich Beck and his theory of modernity. Beck was born on May 15, 1944 in Stolp, Germany. He received a law degree from the University of Freiburg and studied sociology, 
philosophy, psychology, and political science at the University of Munich. He became a professor at the University of Munster and Bamberg from 1979 and 1992. In 1992, he released his book, Risk Society, Towards a New Modernity, and from 1992 until his death, he was a professor of sociology and director of the Institute for Sociology at the University of Munich. In today's society, we don't worry about the class structure of the proletariats and bourgeoisie. We have global warming, obesity, political and environmental downfalls, and plenty more risks. There's no way to map out these risks and dangers, and we can't definitively answer what causes them and what the outcomes are, meaning we have to face them head on and suffer the consequences. This is what Beck argues in his theory of modernity. He says that in classical modernity, distribution of wealth was the main issue, whereas in our modernity, we focus on the prevention, causes, and minimizing of risk. We care about safety. Beck says that modernity has created a number of risks for people. He argues that social justice, reasoning, and mass production has become a thing of the past. The world is fast changing, and we are now living in a world which is beyond the modern. He calls this second modernity. Second modernity refers to the fact that modern institutions are becoming global, while everyday life is breaking free from the hold of traditions and customs. He said that earlier modernity largely consisted of industrialization and that it was good for people, but the new modernity has created risks, and when the advancements in science and technology that we have now, most people don't know what those risks are. As technology produces these new forms of risks, we are constantly required to respond and adjust to these changes. The risk society, as he calls it, includes many changes that affect us globally within contemporary social life, such as employment patterns shifting, job insecurity, the declining influence of traditions and customs, traditional family patterns just completely being gone, and many, many more. He says that now in the West, individualization is arising, where people are not connected to structures anymore and can reflexively create themselves in the society they live in. Beck states in his book, Risk Society, Towards a New Modernity, that just as modernization dissolved the structure of feudal society in the 19th century and produced the industrial society, modernization today is dissolving industrial society and another modernity is coming into being. To sum it up, he says, The thesis of this book is, we are not witnessing the end, but the beginning of modernity, that is, of a modernity beyond its classical industrial design. Beck argues that we do have the ability to be a better society because we can evaluate risks and we can take action to reduce them, but in our generation, we can't survive without the advantages of modernity. The new and old modernity are completely separate now, with no one being tied to their own constraints because of individualization. So, there's no going back. To summarize these two theorists, Giddens says there are four institutions of modernity and three items that give it dynamism. Disembedding breaks down geographical barriers and makes interaction less personal because we don't need to be face-to-face -to, -face to interact. He also says reflexivity means that traditions and customs are no longer a guide to how we should act. We reflect and modify our actions in light of new information. For Beck, he says we face new, higher, consequential risks in our society. He sees second modernity as a time of growing individualization where we become increasingly reflexive. Tradition no longer controls who we are, and because of that, we have to reflect on ourselves and the consequences of our actions. It's clear that Giddens and Beck have the same idea. Giddens also believes that late modernity has become a risk society, and Beck extends Giddens' reflexivity to taking into account the risks of our actions and our attempt to minimize them. Also, like Giddens, Beck sees late modernity as a period of growing individualization. Tradition is no longer on the forefront. Thanks to these two very important theorists, we have a better understanding of modern society and the things that are going on in it. Once this period of modernity is over and moved on, who knows what it'll be like in the future.